In this unit, we're going to learn about herpes viruses. And that's one word, herpes virus, and it refers to a family of viruses. There are a lot of different kinds, but not surprisingly, the ones we care about are the eight that infect humans. And we call those the human herpes viruses 1 through 8, or HHV 1 through 8. So when people say herpes in common parlance, they're usually referring to herpes simplex virus 1 and 2, and those are actually just HHV 1 and 2. And as you can see, there are actually these six others that also infect humans. Learning about them can be kind of hard because they have so many names, but we're going to refer to them by their most common names here in the middle column. And these viruses are ubiquitous and not seasonal, and you can really get them anytime, any place. As an example, somewhere around 90% of adults have gotten CMV, 60% have HSV-1, 20% have HSV-2. Now let me give you the 411 on herpes viruses and their structure and replication. So starting with structure, they are all double-stranded DNA viruses, which means a low mutation rate. Now structurally, the DNA is in the viral core surrounded by capsid. And then around that, there's tegument. And around that, there is an envelope. And there are glycoproteins that are in the envelope and extend beyond it. And you might think that an envelope would protect a virus, but it actually doesn't. Envelope viruses are usually more labile or less stable in the environment. So herpes viruses will actually not hang around in the environment that much. Now here's one critical fact to understand about herpes viruses. So when a viral particle goes into a cell, it goes to the nucleus where it deposits its DNA. And when it does, it faces a choice, either to become lytic or to become latent. And lytic means that the virus is going to make new proteins, replicate its DNA, and then create new viral particles that can go infect new cells. And that's probably what you're used to thinking of a virus as doing. We call that lytic because all the progeny virus that's produced ends up killing or lysing the cell. Now latent means that the viral DNA silently settles in the nucleus and does not start replicating and transcribing genes. And it can actually stay there for years. And the question is, why would the virus want to do that? And the answer is, at some later point, it can reactivate. We don't know exactly how or why it reactivates, but something happens and the virus starts transcribing some of its genes again and gets the whole lytic machinery going. Now, if you understand this, you'll understand that you can actually have two different kinds of infections with herpes viruses. The first time you're ever infected, you have the first kind, which we call primary infection. You're not immune, so the virus can spread widely, there will be a lot of lytic infection, and there will be very possibly visible disease. So the immune system is going to come in and kill off all of this visible virus, and that's the end of the primary infection. But in the meantime, some of the virus became latent, and that virus is almost invisible. It's just a small piece of DNA somewhere in a nucleus. And so that latent virus is going to remain after the primary infection. And that means that at some later date, you can get the second kind of infection, which is reactivation or recurrent infection. And that happens when, by some chance, maybe because you're immunosuppressed or stressed, the latent virus becomes lytic again and starts the whole process over. And the key thing is this will look different from the primary infection because your immune system has already seen the virus this time. It's already seen it in the past, and so it's more prepared to prevent spread. But the virus still has some opportunity to replicate and to potentially cause disease and to potentially be spread to other hosts. And so from that, I hope you can see why it's very clever of the virus to become latent, because it offers repeated opportunities to transmit to new hosts every time it reactivates. Now going back, all herpes viruses can be subdivided into three groups, alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha viruses include HSV1 and 2 and VZV. And a couple of things to know about them is they have a short reproductive cycle, the cells, the specific cells they remain latent in and reactivate from are sensory neurons. And finally, the disease they cause is usually a painful infection that involves the skin or mucous membranes. Next are beta viruses, and they include CMV and HHV6 and 7. And in contrast to alpha viruses, these have a long reproductive cycle, and the cells they become latent in are white blood cells. And last of all, Gamma viruses include EBV and HHV8. 
Now the specific cells that these become latent in are lymphocytes, and a really important thing to know about gamma viruses is that they're associated with cancer, and we'll see why later. So now let's go through each of the herpes viruses one at a time and learn more about them.